Broncos wrapped up OTAs today, and it was the first day that the media was allowed to come and watch and report on the practice. So we're going to run through the news, the takeaways. Sean Payton spoke to the media, so we'll share with you guys what he had to say about guys like Bo Nix and some injury updates. So a lot to get to on today's show. But let's start with the number one topic in Denver, which is the quarterback position. How is Bo Nix looking? Who is looking like to be the starter for week one? So early impressions are the Broncos are rotating their quarterbacks. On Tuesday, Jarrett Stidham opened up as the starting quarterback with the first team offense. Wednesday, it was Zach Wilson. Thursday, it was Bo Nix. And I think not to read too much into it because it's OTAs, but I think this gives you a very rough idea as to what the depth chart looks like early on. Now, that's not a big surprise to me. Rookies never just get gifted the number one spot on a depth chart. Now, they can quickly ascend after a few OTAs and minicamp practices and whatnot, but hardly ever do you see even like the first overall pick. I mean, sure, you had Caleb Williams, but like Bryce Young last year, I remember he was not the initial starter on the very first set of OTAs and whatnot. But I don't think Bo Nix is just going to be handed the quarterback one job, and that shouldn't be a big surprise to people. Like, Bo Nix is very capable of winning the job. I don't think Jared Stidham and Zach Wilson are too tough of competition for him to overcome. But I don't think that if Bo Nix comes out and doesn't play even decently well, they're going to start him week one. Like if Jared Stidham looks like the better quarterback throughout training camp and, you know, the preseason, I think it'll be Stidham starting week one. If Bo Nix looks better, it'll be Bo Nix starting. But I do think Nix has to earn the job, and it's not just going to be handed to him because he was the first round pick. Now, Sean Payton had to say on Bo Nix, quote, he's farther along than most would be. So some good praise coming from his head coach. Uh, boots on the ground beat reporters takeaways from this open practice today to the media was Bo Nix looked like a rookie in OTAs. Had some good passes here, had some misses over there. Uh, Benjamin Albright, who I think does a great job of covering the team, tweeted out, I would say that day one of OTAs, Looked like day one of OTAs. Wilson threw a pick. Nix was behind receivers. Jared Stidwater, which is, I guess, the nickname. Oh, no, Stidham. Uh, probably, won't, probably won the day if anyone was keeping an OTA scorecard. So this, to me, doesn't uh, shatter any idea of, like, or blow me away as to where quarterbacks are. It's May. Don't get too in your feels about how Bo Nix looked in the first week of OTAs. There's going to be good days. There's going to be bad days. Ultimately, you just hope that by every single week, they get better and better. And come training camp and preseason, you see improvement as we inch closer to September and week one. But friendly reminder, it's May. Now, who do you think will be the week one starter? Zach Wilson, Jared Stidham, or Bo Nix? My initial, react, my initial prediction for the longest time was before the draft and anything, I think it's Jared Stidham. And I still want to stick by that, but man, I, I am being persuaded to the Bo Nix camp because I do feel like Bo Nix can overtake Stidham. And if it's really, really close, tie goes to the first round pick. Second takeaway from OTAs today, Cortland, uh, Cortland Sutton concern. So Sutton was one of a few players not spotted at OTAs, which, good reminder, voluntary, not mandatory along with DJ Jones and newly acquired defensive end John Franklin Myers, who they traded for from the New York Jets during the draft. But when Sean Payton was asked about Cortland Sutton and where they're at with his uh, you know, dispute over the contract, we'll call it, Sean Payton didn't sound concerned. Uh, he sounded like a guy that was fully anticipating for all this to be resolved and to get him back sooner rather than later. And ultimately, Payton and the Broncos know they can't trade Sutton. They don't want to trade Sutton. They're not looking to trade Sutton, and Sutton is not looking to get traded. So to me, I think this will just boil down to adding some more guaranteed money for 2025, which, listen, if I were Denver, I wouldn't be over the moon about doing that because aging receivers that don't separate super well, you tend not to want to add more guaranteed money to the final year of their contract. Sutton definitely had a really strong 2023 season, 10 touchdowns, but he wasn't a big play machine when it came to moving the ball down the field at about 750 or so yards. So to me, I feel like Denver has to keep Sutton because you've got Bo Nix and you can't just 
toss Bo Nix out there with Josh Reynolds, Marvin Mims, Tim Patrick coming off an Achilles and ACL tear, and then like a Jalen Virgil to be your top four wideouts or rookie Troy Franklin from round four. Like that's just not going to be sustainable to get a good read as to whether or not Bo Nix is your guy if that's what he has to work with. So you got to keep Cortland Sutton. Hopefully this uh, contract dispute gets resolved and Sutton comes back soon because I do think there is a lot of value to Sutton being here with the quarterback since all but Jared Stidham are new. And even Jared Stidham, he only worked with for a few games at the end of last year. So it would be nice to have the connections in the chemistry start to grow between Knicks and Sutton. So that's why I'm very hopeful that they can get this done by mandatory minicamp. If they can't and Sutton still does not show up and he's taking fines, we're going to have a much better idea about how serious this, which would be then a holdout, is. Now, before we get on to the rest of the takeaways from the first day of media availability at OTAs, help us reach 21.1 thousand subscribers today. We're 15 subs away. Walked into the office this morning, put my backpack down, took my laptop out, had a wonderful, not-so-nice message from my boss waiting for me about, hey, Broncos, not picking up subs lately. What the heck's going on? So let's get ourselves to 21,100 subscribers before the day is over. Third takeaway I've got, uh, injury update. So Sean Payton also spoke to the media about where some guys are in their injury rehab process. And, well, notable names like Drew Sanders and Greg Dulcich are on the list. Unfortunate to see Greg Dulcich on here. He was working off on the side at OTAs today, along with or also injured was Drew Sanders. DeLaren Turner-Yell, who's coming off an ACL injury, and then Caden Stearns, who's also coming off an injury from last year as well. But Drew Sanders, we did get a little bit more clarity as to what happened. It was in pre-draft workouts with the team, just jumped and pop, Achilles popped. So surgery was deemed a success. Sean Payton did toss out the word October for a rough idea of when he could come back. But then he kind of quickly followed it up with, don't hold me to that, though. That's just a rough idea. So hopefully we can get Drew Sanders back. But I do feel like this is a, a decent loss in terms of development for Drew Sanders because it's not like come October when Drew Sanders is healthy, he'll be like Baron Browning impactful in his first few games back. Like I think Drew Sanders really needed this offseason to learn and develop and mature as an outside linebacker coming off the edge, which is where Denver kind of moved him to to end the 2023 season. So he'll miss some valuable reps in training camp, mini camp OTAs uh, at that position. But hopefully we can see Sanders in the middle of the 2024 season. Greg Dulcich also not available to practice today. Why? Your guess is as good as mine. Um, last I recall, he had a foot injury kind of nagging him when he returned from the hamstring injury towards the end of 2023. But Sean Payton did sound rather encouraging and optimistic about Dulcich coming back soon. He's been working hard, and the goal and hope is that he is ready to roll for training camp uh, at the end of July, early August. So fingers crossed that Greg Dulcich can get back on the field because he was so impactful when he was on the field his rookie season, and we've just seen so little of him since. So, fingers crossed, Dulcich will be coming back soon. Uh, some other stuff I want to get to here. Just some general notes and thoughts and takeaways I had. We had our first look at Tim Patrick, this picture from DNVR. So, Patrick wearing A, the number 12 jersey, and B, just coming back from an Achilles tear from last August and 100% out there on the field come May. Really encouraging stuff to see, really optimistic about what he can be like in this uh, 2024 offense, but ultimately a lot of caution with that optimism since we haven't seen him in two seasons. Uh, Lucas Kroll, by the way, number 85, he was a big-time standout at uh, OTAs today. The media pointed out to Sean, like, hey, we saw you talking to Lucas Kroll, giving him some pointers, like, what can you say about him? And... I mean, Sean Payton just raved about, like, his backup tight end. So, I mean, you've got a tight end room with Adam Trotman and Greg Dulcich, uh, Nate Atkins, who was a UDFA that made the roster last year, Lucas Kroll also competing for not just a roster spot, I think, but we're beyond that point, it sounds like, competing for some playing time on the field because he did have some nice moments towards the end of last year, but ultimately... We're going to have to wait and see if Kroll can be more than just one of those like fun off-season storylines. 
that really pans out to being a consistent guy on Sundays in the fall. But keep an eye on number 85. He made a lot of really good plays, a lot of good catches throughout training camp or throughout OTAs this uh, this week. So that's definitely a name to impress your friends with at the bar when talking about some under-the-radar candidates to have a large presence this year. I also think it's a good time just to remind everyone about all the new names and faces and the new numbers can sometimes, at least to me, be a little bit confusing of, who's that guy? What, he changed numbers? Didn't know that. So here are all the rookies. There was a great picture of Tim Patrick standing next to Devon Vele, the rookie out of Utah who was wearing Patrick's old number, 81. Um, some newbies and some number changes. So Zach Wilson's wearing number four. Baron Browning changed to number five, which was previously occupied by Randy Gregory. Jared Stidham moved up to number eight. Josh Reynolds wearing number 11. Tim Patrick now wearing number 12. Riley Moss changed his number to 21. Brandon Jones, your Justin Simmons replacement, if you will, is wearing number 22. And Caden Stearns changed from 30 to number 23. So those are some of the new faces and the new numbers players are rocking. But final thoughts coming out of the first day that was open to the media and our first look at the 2024 Broncos in a lot of way, it's OTAs. Like, there's no contact. There's no pads. It's primarily a lot of offense and defensive install for new players and new faces, which is why across the league you see veterans tend to skip OTAs because they don't need to go back for like syllabus week, which is essentially what this is. Now, of course, in a perfect world, everyone is there and everyone's doing great and you win the Super Bowl in May, but the reality is you don't win the Super Bowl in May. So as great as it would be just to have tons of roses and awesome storylines and everyone balling out at OTAs, I got bad news. That's probably not going to happen. Like, there's going to be some good days. There's going to be some bad days. And hopefully the good outweighs the bad as we get into September. But it's OTAs. It's May. Take a deep breath and don't get too worked up about any storyline you hear coming out of it. Don't make mountains out of hills. Now, who is a sleeper on the Broncos this year? Talking about Lucas Kroll kind of got me thinking, who was a player that, I would say last year, kind of Jaleel McLaughlin was not someone that people had, you know, written down on their bingo sheet of like, he's going to be a really impactful third down back. So who was a sleeper on the 2024 Broncos? Give me a name down below in the comment section. For me, I feel like just because of the opportunities he'll have at the goal line, Notre Dame rookie running back Audric Esteme, I think that he could be a bit of a vulture and have a handful of touchdowns, maybe not a lot of yards in year number one, but I think he could have a nose for the end zone. All right, that will do it for us on today's show. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Really, really appreciate those of you that watch all the way to the end of the video. And if you're still watching, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and we'll see you throughout the weekend.